That's what we like to see, everybody. The Leafs, it was a back and forth game. Hey, if you were at the game, you got your you got bang for your buck, that's for damn sure. The Leafs are able to come away with the 5-4 victory over the Ottawa Senators in regulation. The Leafs picked up their 33rd win on the year, and they remain, uh, I'm not even going to say it, you know what? The Leafs are 3-0-1 since coming back from the All-Star break. Uh, they're playing well. They're scoring on all cylinders. Frederick Anderson didn't have his, his typical game. However, he did have 44 shots again. Some four goals on 44 shots. This game was back and forth like crazy. And Ottawa mind, it reminds me of Montreal in, in the sense of this. No matter what team they throw on the ice, no matter what team Ottawa throws, no matter what Montreal throws at you, it's Leafs versus Sens or Leafs versus Canadians. You know it's going to be a dogfight no matter who, what the teams look like standings-wise. And that's what you saw today. And Ottawa's a team that's been grinding this year, obviously, with the way things are going there. It's, it's not a lot of fun. Um, but uh, they're, they're going for the rebuild. And they got to do that to become a good team, right? So, Leaf fans, we know that. And um, for the Leafs, uh, under 10 minutes in, John Tavares to Mitch Marner, beautiful move, to, and a beautiful, beautiful pass backside. It was more or less a two-on-one, and a beautiful feed to Zach Hyman backdoor. He, he doesn't even shoot, he kind of like redirects it, and it goes into the top corner of the net. Zach Hyman with his 10th goal of the year, and the Buds are on the board, it's one nothing. Just under three minutes to play, however, Magnus PayRV scores and ties the game at one going into the first intermission. The Leafs had a 10-to-1 shot total through the first, uh, what, half of the first period. They're playing great. They got the, the first and only goal so far, and, you know, oh, they're feeling great. They're just like they were against Anaheim. However, in the second half of that first period, Ottawa dominates, and they tie the game, and the shots end up 11-11 at the end of the first period. So not a great second half for the first. However, it's tied. Second period rolls around. Matt Duchesne, he scores to give the Sens a 2-1 lead. And just like the end of the first period, the Leafs come out slow in the second. Shots on goal were really bad to start. It ended up, ended up being 16-12 in favor of the Ottawa Senators. Um, it, at one point in there, they had a four-minute power play, so you can throw that in there as well. And, uh, you know, it looks like the Leafs are going to have a tough time. Their, their legs weren't really going. And then just something happened. The Sens couldn't break it out of the zone. I think it hit like Frederick Gauthier's skate as he was trying to stay with his guy. Puck stops at a dime. And who's there to pick it up? Andres Janssen. And he backhands it past Craig Anderson. I don't know if he was really expecting much of a backhand shot right there. He got it. And Janssen scores. Gauthier with the assist. And the Leafs have tied the game at two. Andres' is, what, third goal in two games and his 13th goal of the year. Not even, well, just over two minutes after that, Austin Matthews comes down on a two-on-one, tries to toe-drag it around his defender, kind of loses it, tips it forward, loses it again, and what Austin Matthews is so good at, I mean, he's, he's amazing at many things, but one thing I've noticed with him, when pucks are in skates of other players, he has a way of picking it out, you know? I mean, because he saw that puck in the season, he's like, whoop, and just like ripped it, bar down, or it was bar, or... You know, it was just a gorgeous shot from Austin Matthews. Unassisted on the play. 24th goal of the year. Lee fans, five more years at least of that. Beautiful. Beautiful job by Austin. And just like that, the Leafs go from being down 2-1. And two minutes and nine seconds after that, the Leafs take the lead 3-2. And it just what, under two minutes after the Matthews goal... Mitch Marner on a two-on-one with John Tavares. Toe drag around his defender. Backdoor feed to John Tavares. Redirects it into the back of the net. The Leafs score three goals in a matter of four minutes. And they got a 4-2 lead going into the third period. And Kasperi Kapanen grabs a secondary assist there on uh, John Tavares' his 32nd goal of the year. Mitch Marner is a wizard. He's going to get paid. We can talk about We'll be talking about it on the podcast there tomorrow. Um... But he's some kind of wizard on a two-on-one. He's got the shot he can use, but man, his passing ability and the ability to get around it, it's incredible. And you saw it on the Zach Hyman goal, and you saw it on the John Tavares goal. And the Leafs go into the third period, having not played the greatest game, yet you're up 4-2. But you got to come out strong in the third. The Leafs do not. Thomas Shabbat scores 40 seconds in, and just under 40, uh, four, uh, sorry, just under four minutes in, Magnus Payarvi scores his second goal of the game, and we're tied. Not even four minutes into the third. 
What the heck happened? You know, the, the Leafs just kind of collapse defensively. They lose their men. And just like that, a 4-2 lead, you're feeling great, going to the third, looking to grind this thing out, play solid defense and get two points, turns into a tied hockey game. Just like that. I'm setting my fingers a lot because it needs to happen. And then six minutes after the PayRV goal to tie the game, Zach Hyman does a great job shielding his body with the puck. And I mean, sorry, shielding the puck with his body. There we go. I don't know why. Shielding his body with the... That's an interesting one. And he finds Morgan Riley cross seam. And look at that. That's why we love Morgan Riley. That's why we love Jake Muzzin. Because Muzzin gives Riley the opportunity to do what he did as he goes right towards the net. Thomas Shabbat looked lazy on the defensive play. He's a great offensive guy. And he's got a ton of points for them. That's great. But that was a lazy defensive play by Shabbat. Riley just lifted a stick and went right around him. And beautiful job finishing it for Morgan Riley's 14th of the year. He, uh, I don't know if he ties his career high in points last year or he surpassed it with that point, with that goal there today. Hyman with the two point game. And the Leafs find a way to hang on to the 5 4 victory. So. What does this all mean? Well, the Leafs have now won three straight games. They play three straight at home. They win all three games. But now we look ahead to six straight road games. Now, before we break that down, shots on goal were 44-30 in favor of the Ottawa Senators. Leafs win again in the faceoff dot. You saw what happened in the in the Anaheim Ducks game when you dominate on the faceoff dot. You see what happens today. Maybe some stats don't suggest that the Leafs did dominate, but the faceoff dot was one. Or no, it's actually no. You know what? I was wrong. It was flipped. The Senators won 32 draws to the Leafs 22. That explains the abundance amount of shots, the 44 shots that the Sens have, because they win the draw and they get the puck. Winning faceoffs doesn't really get talked about a whole lot. But when you look at the numbers and you look about what happens in a during, in a game, the Leafs dominated the Ducks in the faceoff dot, and they crushed them in shots. Today, the Leafs got dominated in the faceoff dot, and they got crushed in shots. You see what happens? I'm not saying it's a gigantic thing. and you, A lot of the time it's not a huge, huge deal. But when you're on the power play and you win, a, win an offensive zone faceoff and you're already set up and ready to make a play. Or a defensive zone faceoff and you win that and you clear the puck out. Big faceoffs. You know, that's why we love John Tavares. Now the Leafs didn't play a great game on the faceoff dot today. Special teams, nowhere to be found for both teams. Sens were 0 for 2 in the power play. Leafs 0 for 1. One of the one of the Leafs one of the power plays the Leafs killed off was the four minute major um, or double minor, I guess, uh, by Jake Gardner, the high stick. Uh, I think it was in the second period, and um, great job killing that off. The Leafs actually had a couple quality chances on the on the, on the short handed there. Parlinholm had a great chance. You know, I love what I saw there. Hits, yeah, well, whatever. The Leafs are never up top there. And Frederick Anderson, like we said earlier, didn't play a great game. John Tavares with a goal and an assist, plus two. Zach Hyman, goal and assist, plus one. Andres Johnson with a goal. Morgan Riley with a goal. Austin Matthews with a goal. Marner with two assists. Goche with two assi or with an assist. And Kasperi Kapanen grabs an assist as well. Those are your stats for that. Now let's look ahead to this six-game road trip that the Leafs are about to embark on. Because it it's a big one. You know why? Because it starts in Montreal on Saturday night. Now, if you guys will love looking at standings... This, you already know why I'm saying this is a big game. With this victory tonight for the Leafs, they are now three points up on the Montreal Canadiens with a game in hand still. Now, do the Habs play uh, tomorrow? Uh, they do. They play at home against Winnipeg. So if Winnipeg can find a way to win that game, that'd be great to help the Leafs in a sense. But let's say they don't. And the Habs face the Leafs. Leafs have a game in, or a couple, two games in hand on Saturday night. And you're only one point difference. It's a big game on Saturday night against Montreal in Montreal. Now, after that game, you go to New York at, at, to play at MSG against the uh, New York Rangers. Then you go to Colorado. You go to Vegas. So those are two late games, 9 o'clock in Colorado, 10 o'clock in Vegas. Then you go to Arizona. You go to St. Louis. And then you come back home to on Washington on February 21st. Those games are going to be difficult. Montreal's a good team. I don't care who you are. The Rangers on at home on home ice uh, are, aren't shouldn't be a terrible team. They're a 500 team. You can't take them lightly. Colorado, you know what that first line can do. You saw it when they came to Toronto. Vegas, they struggled early on this year, but they have really come on. How are they doing now? They're uh, 30 and 21. They're playing some good hockey. Arizona, again, 
you can't take any team lightly, but that's a team you should be. 23 and 25 are the Coyotes. St. Louis, two games over 500. They're playing great hockey, I'm pretty sure, as of late. Yeah, they've won three in a row. They're 7-2-1 in their last 10. They've been playing some good, solid hockey. So you're playing some hard teams. It's, look, you guys can give me your whole, well, I'd like them to come out of the road trip like this. Would you like a 3-3, three and 4-2, three, and two? Three, two, and one. You guys go nuts. But this is a big stretch for this Leafs team. Six games on the road is not very easy. You have one back to back, and it's Saturday against Montreal. And wow, the Leafs play on Sunday against the Rangers. Look at that. Um, you know, and so one back to back, and it's the first one, the first game on Saturday night, and then on Sunday in, in New York. It's going to be a grind, but we got to take this thing one game at a time. And so now we focus on the Montreal Canadiens. I don't care what the standings look like. I don't care what they're not, they're supposed to be this year. They are three points behind the Leafs for second in the Atlantic Division. The Leafs got to come out flying, and they got to start on time. You saw what happened when they did today. They got the first goal. They got the lead. Look what happened against the Anaheim Ducks. You got the well, it took the second period, but you they outplayed them in the first period, and then you had a three nothing lead going into the third period against the Ducks. You start on time. You score the first goal. You get some momentum, and you beat down the Montreal Canadiens in Montreal. It's going to be a doozy of a matchup there on Saturday, all right? So you know what, guys? That is going to do it for this one. You guys enjoy the video, and you guys enjoy the victory in the game there today. Smack that like button. I do appreciate that. And the subscribe button if you guys have not already. Comment down below, guys. What would you think of the game? Who's your MVP in this one? Mine, Zach Hyman. I know he had a two-point game, uh, and there were probably some other guys maybe stood out a little bit more to you guys, but he was my guy because the way he was grinding on the PK, for one, and he gets a two points plus the ability to do what he does on a gamely basis and the fact that he added the two points and added the four minute penalty kill now, ideally he wasn't out there for the entire four minutes but the way he played tonight he's my mvp jt was good marner was good zach kyman's my guy all right so who's your mvp what are your expectations for the six game road trip also your expectations for saturday in montreal whoa in Montreal. I don't know what just happened there. All right. So Evan and I will talk to you guys. Podcast edition. Like I said earlier, tomorrow afternoon. Podcast edition. Links are in the description for the podcast channel, guys. And for the podcast itself on iTunes. Twitter is also down below. Follow up. Send me a DM. Do all that great stuff. And I will uh, talk to you guys. Raptors edition tomorrow night as they go on that four game, um, what, four game uh, stretch, I guess, before the trade, the all-star break. Uh, for basketball, the trade deadline, though, is tomorrow. Will the Raptors make a move? I don't know. Will they wait till the buyout, so they can get one of the buyout candidates? Well, we're going to have to wait and see how that all plays out. Tomorrow, I think it's like 3 o'clock or something like that, is the trade deadline for basketball. It'll, we'll be talking live on the podcast. We'll be recapping what's going on, all that crazy stuff around the NBA. Um, but as for the Toronto Maple Leafs, guys, like we said, they will be taking on the Montreal Canadiens. Les Habitants. At the Bell Center in Montreal, 7 o'clock puck drop there on Saturday night. Frederick Anderson, Carey Price, the expected goaltenders in that game. Almost the assumed goaltenders in that game. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'll talk to you guys then.